All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our presentation on Chapter 3, where we will be talking about uh, filters and queries and being able to extract uh, the data you want from Access. So without further ado, let me go over and share my screen. And let's move over to the slides. All right. So let's talk about queries and data access. So. Um, there's some things I want to focus on in this particular lecture. And one I, I will focus a little bit on uh, finding and replacing records in the database. We'll talk a little bit about that. But really what I want to talk about is um, how to develop queries, uh, how to run the wizards, uh, how to create them in design view, uh, and in general, how to get the data you want out of access when you have a database full of data. Uh, and um, then how to view that uh, data in particular ways that you want uh, through sorting it, um, uh, defining selection criteria, uh, aggregate functions for uh, adding calculated fields, uh, and, and how to create them. So one of the distinctions as you're uh, you know, potentially going to be doing your, uh, completing your database project pretty soon is that um, I want you to understand that uh, you need to really focus on the organic data that goes into your database. Data that doesn't require a calculation uh, is what should actually go in your database, and then you can use calculated fields to create those calculations. So that's the difference there. You really want to focus on that organic or original data uh, and how to structure that data for your databases. So without further ado, let's talk about how to uh, get records out or get data out of a database. Uh, so we'll skip over the find and replace stuff here. Um, but we will talk a little bit about um, this notion of a wildcard character or wildcard characters that you have in Excel. So the goal of this is to be able to match things uh, rather imprecisely. Uh, so in the case of using an asterisk as a wildcard character, it's to match any number of characters to search for a word that starts with something. So for example, if I want to search for the word archive, uh, I could um, and find other words that begin with AR, uh, I could put an AR and then an asterisk in my filter criteria. Uh, there's other wildcard characters, such as a, such as a hash. Uh, so to be able to, a hash is used to be able to match any single numeric character. Uh, so for example, to search for a three-digit number that starts with 75, uh, 75, you could put uh, 75 uh, and then the hash. Uh, there's another one, uh, the question mark, can be used as a wildcard character, and that's to match any single character uh, to search for three little word that starts, you know, for example, to start uh, a word that starts with T and ends with P, uh, you could put a question mark between T and P. Uh, brackets are used to match any single character within the bracket. So to search for a word, for example, that starts with the letter E uh, and contains any of the letters A or R and ends with R, uh, you could put uh, E uh, AR in brackets, and then R example in, uh, at the end, and then you'll get ear or air as a result. Um, so uh, you can use the unary not symbol as a wild card uh, to match any single character not within brackets. Uh, and then you can use the, uh, the uh, dash symbol to match any range of characters in ascending order. Uh, for example, to search for a word beginning with A, and ending with E with any letter between B and T, you could enter in A, B, dash, T uh, in brackets, and then an E at the end. OK, so uh, we'll be using these wildcard characters a bit in our exercises, uh, and you may find them useful uh, in your projects. OK, so uh, you can use them in find and replace. And then more importantly, you can use them as uh, filtering criteria in queries. And so I want to jump straight to the idea of filtering and queries. So a filter is simply uh, a very basic query where it's a temporary condition applied to a table or query, uh, but it's really about extracting uh, only the data you want, which is uh, a query to a database. Um, and uh, records not matching the, fit, uh, the filter criteria are hidden. Uh, and you can save these filters uh, in a table. Uh, and you can also, of course, save them in the query. So filtered records, right? You can simply uh, apply a filter using the, um, the funnel button and associated commands. Um, and then really what's going on underneath the hood is, uh, is an actual query. So let's move on to really talking about how to use queries and how to save them. 
All right, so queries. One of the easiest ways to generate a query is using the query wizard in Access. Uh, you don't have to type any special language, and it precedes you through uh, a number of different steps to develop um, some you know, basic to intermediate levels of complexity, uh, queries of intermediate levels of complexity. But anything more specific, you have to go in and design it yourself. So you have a couple different types of queries. You have simple queries, uh, what are known as cross-tab queries, uh, finding duplicates, and finding unmatched queries. OK, so a finding duplicates query, if we're going through the query wizard, it shows you how to, oops, uh, moving back one slide there, um, how to uh, select fields and then selecting whether or not you want to find duplicates. Uh, you can do something similar with finding unmatched or matched fields. Um, and more importantly, it's really talk, we really want to talk about uh, queries and how to design them. So to add, a, to add fields to a query design view grid, um, you can drag the fields, uh, you can double click the field name, you can select from a list, or you can double click the title bar. I think it's best at this point to go over and take a look at the design view of a particular query. So uh, let's, we have a couple queries here. Let's bring up a few here so you can see a couple different ways of how queries are designed. So this is a um, this is the inventory template in Access. You actually have um, access to uh, this particular template uh, yourself uh, with any uh, with any Access uh, uh, installation that you have. So here, this is a pretty simple query um, where there's a couple things going on. Uh, you have um, a field called file as uh, where you have a uh, calculation being performed here. Um, and then it's sorting it in ascending order. Uh, and then you have a search going on here where it's actually using, um, uh, it's looking for all fields of the employees table. So the things to note here are that you have uh, the names of fields, which can sometimes be calculated fields uh, or expressions that you define yourself, or can simply be um, fields that are from the tables themselves, for example, I can very easily drag this field down uh, to my query, uh, and it will appear in my query. Um, and so across here, it's noted that you have fields, uh, the table that it comes from, how you want to sort, if you want to sort based on this field, for example, if I want to sort in ascending order or descending order based on last name, that field I just dragged down, I can do that. Uh, and then whether or not you want to show the field. Um, so you may be using it for purposes, but uh, for certain purposes, for query purposes, but might not want to actually view the field. So you can uh, decide whether or not you want to show it. Um, and then criteria, you may actually want to filter uh, on, uh, a, on the values of that particular field. So what I could do very simply here is I could say, uh, I only want to know, so my last name is Levy, I only want to uh, bring up uh, last names whose names begin with L-E-V. And then I put an asterisk because your last name could be spelled L-E-V-I, L-E-V-Y, uh, L-E-V-I-E, um, L-E-V-Y-E, who knows. The point is, um, anything after L-E-V, uh, I'm, I'm filtering on those first three letters, and anything after uh, LEV is a wild card. Uh, so um, we can do that very easily here. And what's happening underneath the hood uh, with these particular queries is that it's generating, generating what's known as an SQL statement. Um, and it's doing this for you automatically. So as you can tell, there is a very complex SQL statement, SQL statement uh, that's being generated for us. And you can see the thing that we just added right there, uh, where it's filtering out uh, last names based on the first three letters of LEV, where it says where employees dot last name is like, and the like operator is what lets us is what allows us to use the wildcard, uh, where employee dot last name is like uh, LEV and then we use our asterisk wildcard. All right, let's go back. Let's put this back to design view here. 
And let's move back to the slides. So a single table query. That's effectively what we have going on right here because we only have one table that's being used. Um, simple to, uh, you know, oops, excuse me, let's go back one slide. You have a single table query, and in this example, you have a product table uh, with a bunch of different fields, and you have uh, a field of product description, price, and size, which are all straight from the database, or straight from the actual table itself, and you're choosing to show them and simply uh, show all the values in that table. So a very, very simple query in that regard with no filter criteria. Now, whoops, it's also important to know that queries are not limited to a single table. And if we go over here to our access example and some of the other queries that we have, let's see if, oh, I, might, I think I did not actually uh, open one that had multiple tables, but let's do that right now. Uh, note that queries can involve multiple tables and moreover, many times often do uh, entail the use of multiple tables. So here's one where the actual relationships are shown and these relationships are defined uh, in your uh, relationships editor, right? They're defined all right here. There's nothing different from uh, the relationships that are uh, being shown here and the ones that are being shown in your relationships editor, right? It's just uh, showing you that there is a relationship between those tables uh, so that you can work with it. So many times queries will have multiple tables. So like I mentioned in the design view, you have the option to sort by ascending or descending order. And you can do this almost regardless of the field type that you choose. Short and long text, numbers, currency, date, time, oldest to newest, uh, 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 you know, yes, no fields, binary fields, yes values, then no values, or no values, then yes values. Um, almost every field type, predefined field type in access, gives you the ability to readily sort very easily. And as I mentioned before, there is a, uh, a tag here that lets you sort by whatever field you want in ascending or descending order. All right, let's move forward. All right, so sorting on multiple fields. As I just showed you, you are not limited to sort by a single field. I could sort this one by descending, and then I could have a secondary sort of inventory item by ascending, and I could keep going forward all the way through the field levels to have uh, tertiary and quaternary levels of sort. So it'll sort you know, primarily by ID in this case, secondarily by item, tertiarily by uh, current stock, and so forth, as much as you want to uh, have those sorts uh, defined. Comparison operators. It's important to note that when filtering or using uh, a filter, that it's using a, that it's using comparison operators, uh, and that you can specify these. So there's of course the equals operator, which specifies whether or not something is equal to, less than or equal to, less than, greater than, greater than or equal to, and not equal to, using the uh, greater than and less than symbol uh, uh, right next to each other. So we don't have any examples of them here. Let's see if some of our other examples have them in why well, yes they do um, so this inventory reorder query actually has a good example of using the less than or equal to comparison operator so there is a reorder level uh, that is specified right here uh, and this inventory extended query is simply filtering out as to whether or not the stock is less than or equal to reorder level, meaning does it need to be reordered? So it's a useful query in that respect because we have, uh, if it, we can get a view of stock that needs reordering, uh, when to restock. So those are your comparison operators. Now, like I showed you before, we don't necessarily always have to have the field showing up in the results of our query. We could be using it to sort or filter, but we might not want to show it. Um, and so that's where we have these boxes that allow you to show or hide uh, different fields. 
Uh, and so you can do that uh, with multiple field, one field or more fields. So logical operators. Now, what logical operators do is allow you to filter on whether or not something may meet more than one particular piece of criteria relating to data in a single field. So if I'm interested in returning, for example, um, records that meet more than one last name criteria, I can use the and. If I'm uh, interested, let's go back one, uh, records that return one or more criteria, uh, then I can use the or operator, or I can use the not operator to exclude uh, filter criteria. So, for example, I think I have this employee's extended query that I was uh, working with a little bit here. Uh, what I can do is I can actually define a query um, to, for example, return fields that um, uh, are, that begin with LEV and, for example, begin with um, uh, DAV. I chose that simply because my wife's maiden name is Davis, uh, so Levy and Davis. So I want to return uh, the first three letters of those particular last names, um, and I can do that. Uh, so um, in this case, what's interesting to note is the way I've defined it as is, uh, is not going to return any data. And why is that? Well, because there's not going to be any single entry in the database that has uh, that begins with both LEV and DAV. That's just impossible, right, uh, for the first three letters. However, what I could do is change AND to OR, and then it'll return both. So that's where it becomes useful. And those are comparison operators. Now, what I could also do right here, I could say uh, NOT, oops, excuse me, not LEV or uh, DEV. I'll just do it like this. And also a notice if I tab out, um, Access will actually format that query appropriate for me, appropriately for me. It's smart enough to do that. So uh, in this case, I'm looking for records where the last name is not like LEV or DAV. So everything else other than uh, potentially LEV or Davis. All right, so those are your comparison operators, and here are some examples of how to do this. Uh, they you know, are doing it quite um, similarly to what we talked about. How to use the AND operator, also how to use the OR operator. Uh, you can actually use the OR field, uh, which uh, exists right here. Um, you can, you know, it's, it's your choice. And so there's some special operators, which we've been uh, looking at one of them, um, uh, but you can actually use them as part of your filter criteria as you see fit. So we were looking at the like operator, which match matches text values by using wildcards. But then there's some other ones that are really interesting and potentially of use to us, such as uh, the between operator, which determines if a number or date is within range, or the in operator, which determines if a value is found within a set of values. Uh, so between is really useful for dates. Uh, and so the slide here actually has a great example of how to use dates and uh, the hash wildcards. So the criteria here, um, so taking a look at this query, um, we are, uh, looks like, let's see, we have table schedule and table customer. Uh, we have a field for date of appointment, service employee, customer first name. It, lookings, it looks like we're trying to find appointments between February 1st, 2018 and February 28th, 2018. So all appointments within February of 2018. And the way that uh, the query is specified to do this is by using the between operator right here and then using the hash symbol, the pound symbol, uh, around dates with quotation marks um, and quotation marks around text. However, 
Uh, we don't necessarily need to do that right here. So it's just using the pound symbol and it's saying that um, if it's between February 1st, 2018 and February 28th, 2018, then return those records. So um, that's how you would specify the criteria there. And there's actually a, an example of that um, in one of your exercises that you do. All right, so um, you, like we showed before, actually, uh, you can combine the logical and special operators. Uh, you can combine like and not uh, very easily. Uh, and I think we we did that right here, not like LEV or like DAV. We've combined the special operators. Um, they very much run together like a sentence. Uh, so note that you can use them and combine them uh, in your query as you see fit. And it will be good for you to test out um, how to actually do this and get the records you want. So it's also interesting here in this example, so let's take a look at this particular uh, example right here, um, we're using not, like, and then we in inside of our date in quotation marks, we're specifying a wild card. So that actually gives us uh, a result that says um, we want appointments that are not in February, right? So it's not like to anything in February 2018, so everything outside of February. All right, so uh, we've talked about how to filter criteria and how to pull out the organic data uh, or original data that we need from our databases. Now, what's also good to note is that you have aggregate functions that you can use as part of your queries and reports. Uh, you can calculate sums, averages, counts, uh, mins and maxes, um, and you can add them to uh, your queries and your reports uh, very easily. You can add a totals row, for example, uh, to your queries. Um, let's see if I can go to it here. Uh, you can see right here in my, uh, now this is a query that actually comes from somewhere else, so we can't actually highlight it here, but you can see in your query design, you have the totals uh, button there uh, right in the center of your screen. So you can add totals very easily, right? Um, and you can uh, do all sorts of other aggregate functions, uh, such as counting, minimum, uh, and maximum. And what, the way you do that is you actually define additional fields, and you can use the expression builder uh, in Access uh, to be able to easily define these aggregate functions. You can also do all sorts of calculated fields uh, to, um, you know, add additional spice to your aggregate functions or make entirely new with arithmetic calculations that show up when you are in your query. Uh, you have pretty much endless ability to use all sorts of arithmetic calculations, and it should be noted that these do appear in a new field, and you can use a combination of numbers and field values to achieve them. And like I said, the expression builder is really a nice, easy interface uh, to be able to do it. It really shows you what those things look like. And here's a screenshot of the expression builder right here. Okay, and also noted that, um, oops, move back one slide. Also noted that, again, when you build these expressions, they show up as additional fields. So um, if I was to run this particular query, now I, I'm actually just going to run this query here. Um, it's not going to bring up any data uh, because there's actually no data in this database. But if I was to run this query here, um, it would show up as an additional field uh, in my data sheet view. And that makes sense because if you remember when you have your data sitting there, um, you, you're going to have those, you can have those calculated fields show up to the right of them, so you can actually see it as a sum, so it actually becomes useful in that regard. Okay, so in summary, the things we focused on, we talked a little bit about wildcards, uh, and we talked about queries, right, the idea of questioning our database and getting the data back that we want. And we can use the wizard, or we can use des the design view, and in particular, we talked about uh, you know, what this design view looks like. 
if we want to find uh, do simple queries, cross tab queries, you know, which means cross table queries, uh, finding duplicates or finding things that don't match or do match. And so design view is really where uh, we're able to specify, you know, queries of greater fidelity, sorting criteria. We can type in logical operators, aggregate functions, and create calculated fields. And so those are queries in a nutshell. Um, and you'll get into those more as you get into your exercises. All right, I'm going to stop sharing. And that marks the end of this broadcast.